Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the first live stream of the new year. Hope everyone's having a great day. Phew, man. <laughs> I got to get this perfection thing out of my head because everything looked great. And I turned it on, it looked just a little bit off. It wasn't even bad, just a little bit off. So, of course, I had to sit there and try to fix it for the last five minutes. Anyway, all right, man. New Year, New Year, 2019. Let's hope it's a good one. Man, the weather out in uh, around the D.C. area is almost like 50 degrees. So I might actually be able to get to that heat treating uh, outside video. I think it said Tuesday is going to be almost 60. So that will be pretty awesome. Tomorrow I'm going to do the heat treating inside. And I've decided... This is a knife we're kind of working on on that project for the beginners. So I'm going to heat treat this one. And then I made this one. And this one. Uh, this one is 52100 and this is uh, 80 CRV2. So tomorrow I'll be heat treating these knives. And then Wednesday we'll hopefully have that video up. And if it doesn't rain Tuesday, I'm going to try to do the outside heat treating. So I'll have all that working and stuff. So... Yeah, man. All right. So, if you're watching this on the repost, uh, leave some comments down below. Uh, let me know if you got any ideas or questions for future posts or future live streams. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. Uh, I, I kind of go over a lot of stuff about knives, but as, this, as the title says, I'm going to kind of dive into YouTube because over the last year I've just been studying, studying, studying YouTube. So I'm not an expert on it, but I know, you know, kind of what helps and what doesn't. So there's a lot of things about it. Uh, so let's get on to uh, knife making and stuff. Well, this is actually kind of ties into the whole YouTube thing with um knife making and actually any hobby or anything you want to learn or you're just starting out i say you know if you're commenting here hey what's up rhino oh no problem if you are starting something out you know if you're commenting here you already have a youtube channel even if you don't have any content up the best way to learn about your mistakes or watch your mistakes is you know you don't, you don't have to go buy an expensive camera. You don't have to go buy any equipment. You have an iPhone. Set your iPhone up. Start recording yourself. And then, so you don't have all these files built up about, um, ooh, it's going a little bit loud. Here, let me turn that down. So you don't have all these uh, files built up on your phone. Upload it right to YouTube. You know, start uploading. Then you can watch yourself back. The best way to see the mistakes you're making and how to improve them is to watch your progress and watch yourself back you know all these videos i'm making when i watch her back it's like oh wait why am i holding the knife like that and then you realize oh well i gotta change the way i'm holding it or i gotta change this way so it doesn't really i mean i i i relate it to knife making because that's you know what i do whoops sorry <laughs> I heard of Echo and, whoops, anyway, so, yeah, when you're making knives and stuff like that, it's best, or any, any subject, it's best to film yourself, and then you can see your mistakes, and then after you do that, you know, you'll actually see, and then a couple months down the line, a couple weeks down the line, you'll actually see your progression, and see how good you got. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how good you can get without even knowing it. Because you're watching yourself work every day, so you don't know your progression. You don't know how much you've improved. So, if you film yourself and watch it back, you might not think you're improving at all. But then you watch it a month ago, and you'll be like, wow, I remember when I did it like this. And now I've come this far. So, yeah. And another big thing, um, I see a lot of knife makers that don't improve. And I think one of the biggest things that helped me improve is the guy that got me into knife making 
would critique all my knives. I mean, he would just go to town on me. And man, whew, it was like, <laughs> it was crushing, you know. It would really hurt and devastate me at first, but it really helped me improve a lot. So, what you don't need is people always telling you how good your knives look. Oh man, that looks great. Oh, that looks fun, you know. Oh man, you're doing awesome. Which, yes, it helps the ego. But if you don't also have someone sitting there telling you, hey man, you need to fix this, or yeah, this is wrong, or you know, you're going to think what you're doing is great. Because the hardest person to look at their own work, you know, it's hard to be that critic. You're either the worst critic or you make excuses. And I have a lot of people that ask me, hey, can you check out my work and tell me what it is? And I don't like to be that person because I don't know you. So it's like, um, I don't know if you can take it. People always say, oh, man, you know, give me your worst critique it, tell me what's going wrong. And then you tell them, and they're like, they just, they just come back with excuses. In fact, I'll just dip my toe in the water and tell them one little thing, and they'll be like, oh, well, I do that because of this. Well, if you do that because of this, then you know your problem. But obviously you don't. You're making excuses. So it's hard to tell someone, hey, you need to fix this when you don't know them. Because people get offended real easy. I mean, believe me, when my friend would tell me all my mistakes and all that, man, it hurt. It stung. But, you know, he was like, man, I feel like a dick. I was like, you are a dick, but I need that. <laughs> That's what I need because, man, my knife made me improve. Because he just get on me. He's like, man, why are you doing it like this? Why does this look like that? This, this is... But one thing you have to uh, be able to separate... It's opinion and, and fact. You know, just because, you know, say he likes, say he likes the way this knife looks, but he doesn't like the way this knife looks. Now, both the grinds on here are the same. Now, he says, oh, I don't like that knife. That doesn't mean this knife isn't done right. It just means his opinion is he doesn't like it. Now, if he looked at this where I messed up and says, man, you need to fix that bevel, then that's an honest, you know, a fact. That needs to be fixed. You see what I'm saying there? And that goes with anything, any hobby. Hey, what's up, Aaron? You made it this week. <laughs> no naps, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, you got to be able to sub, um, separate fact and opinion. And also, when someone's critiquing your stuff, you also have to be able to separate jealousy and, and fact because some people they'll look at your stuff and they can't do it and they'll get jealous and be like oh man you're doing that wrong i don't like that knife that looks messed up oh man i can't believe you know you got to be able to celebrate uh separate jealousy fact and opinion you know so you know there's a say you know I, I, i've told you guys before if you if you're new to here i watch like a lot of guys like gary v and uh casey neistat and all that Casey did this one video is like people that don't shouldn't stand in the way of people that do you know when you go on all these comments or forums or YouTube videos you'll see all these people with all this negativity and hate and then you go and you look at their channel and they have no content at all they're just jealous because you're out there doing stuff and they can't do it so and that's, you know, that's one of my main topics. That's where I got this whole YouTube, is it a real job? Because I was watching a Gary V, um, watching a Gary V video, and this guy was just spewing, oh, you guys are brainwashed, and you're this and that. Man, you got to follow your own instinct. And you know what? I agree with that. Because I got caught up in the whole Gary V, like, you know, I'm a very introverted person, but I was trying to be extroverted and try to be a marketing person in sales and all this. And I got caught up, and it was very counterproductive. So I understood what he was saying, but the guy was just so, um, just so negative about how he was saying it that, you know, I kind of stepped in, and I was, like, talking to him, and I got onto this whole thing about YouTube, and he's like, oh, YouTube's not a real job. 
you know, what gives you the audacity? Just because you make you, just because you make YouTube videos doesn't entitle you to anything. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. He's like, you're not an expert, blah, blah, blah. If you were to go to a job, if you were to go to a, a boss or something trying to find a job and said, I'm a YouTuber, they would laugh you out the door. And I'm like, man, step back a second. And I was like, you know, you can go, you can Google my name and you can go to all my LinkedIn or anything. You can see all of my credentials and all that. I was like, send me one thing, Instagram, YouTube, anything like that, that shows you have credentials to to say what you're talking about. He's like, I don't need to show you that. You're a YouTuber. Who cares about YouTubers? Blah, blah, blah. You know? And he's like, you need to get a degree. I was like, I have a degree. I got a degree as a computer tech. And then he didn't answer me after that. But, <laughs> <clears throat> so these people are just trying to get under your skin. But I was like, look, just because YouTube might not be the job, you do realize you know, I'm setting up cameras. I'm learning how to use cameras. I'm learning how to edit. I'm learning how to do all this photography and all that. That is a high-paying job. Whoops. Hey, what's up, Stalking Wolf? Uh, da, 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 da. You know, Aaron, YouTube now, if you go on and you watch tutorials like mine, with your iPhone... Man, you can easily make a video. Just set up your camera, point it at what you're doing, record it, and hit upload. I mean, it's a little bit more than that, but that's basically it. You can do everything from your phone. There's even stuff like Filmic Pro. That's actually, you know, my last video was kind of messed up and grainy and stuff. It's because I just got this new app, Filmic Pro, and I'm learning how to use it. So my stuff was kind of off. But, yeah, you it's real easy these days. They're all making it easy to do everything right from your phone. Man, my ADD, I just went off track again. <laughs> but yeah, so YouTube isn't just about, oh, I make videos. And I told him, I was like, look, do yourself a favor. Make one video. You know, this guy that was yelling and saying all this crap. I was like, man, look, I agree with your statement. I agree with what you're saying to people, that you can't get brainwashed by Gary Vee or you can't get caught up in what he's saying. You know, I agree 100% with that. But the way you're being negative and telling people, oh, they're full of this and full of that, I'm trying not to cuss, yes. <laughs> and, and just completely putting the people down. It's like, man, when you give negative stuff to people, they're just going to feel attacked and come back with negativity, you know? Negative thoughts only get a reaction, which is more negativity. You know, because I was saying the same thing. Hey, man, you know, be careful when you're watching Gary Vee because you can get caught up in what he's about and try to be something you're not. And it's true. But you don't have to be like, oh, man, you're so stupid. You're brainwashed, man. You're just blah, blah, blah. You know, that's the wrong way to go about it. And it's weird when you see people on these comments and you just know they're so miserable. And I guess it's the part of me that wants to help people because I usually go, you know, my, my whatever ignorant part always wants to step in and try to help everybody. So it's like, and a lot of people... When you see these haters and these negative comments, if you hit them with just a little bit of positivity, all of a sudden you'll see their whole demeanor change. But this guy wasn't having it, you know. He's like, oh, you, oh, that, because that's what the whole Gary V. sometimes he's like, you know, don't waste your money on college. You know, take your money and invest it in what you want to do. And I agree 100%. And I even hit this dude, he's like, look, the average student is $40,000 in debt. Student loans are to the tune of $1.5 trillion of student loans. So when you're spending all that money on a degree, you might come out of school and you might not have anything to show for it. You know, that school doesn't have to give you a job. That school doesn't have to do anything. But you still have to pay that debt. So, you know, if you need that structure, then yes, go to school. You know, I got my degree, 
but I became a carpenter. I became a knife maker. I do computers and all that as a hobby. I have that in my brain, but I've never worked as a computer repair person, you know, so all that schooling and all that money, it did help me to learn structure and all that, but I didn't become a computer repair person, so, you know, I could have taken that money that I put into school and put it in to something, well, at that time it would have been music, so I could have built a studio with that music and ran my own studio. So that's what Gary Vee is kind of saying, I think. I can't say what he's saying, but, you know, and that's, when the, that's why the guy's like, you need to get a degree. And I was like, I got a degree, you know. And the funny thing, I was like, show me one credential that can't be fake, you know, because he's like, I got a degree. Blah, blah. It's like, yeah, well, you can go on Photoshop and make a degree that says your name. That doesn't mean you have a degree. You can just tell this dude was just, man, someone hurt him bad or something. Or he got caught up. And, you know, a lot of people see these um, channels where they're like, oh, if you do this, you'll make this much money. Or, but they, they miss the main part where you have to work three times as hard as everyone else. So, yeah. <laughs> so... Even if you don't consider YouTube a real job, you know, the things you're learning, like how to shoot the right way or how to edit the right way or any of that, that can be a, a high-paying job. Uh, <laughs> oh, so we'll go. Uh, actually, that was kind of a YouTube thing, but... Uh, Okay, let's see. I talked about knife makers that are don't improve because people don't talk them. Um, the whole YouTube thing, I kind of touched on this last week about uh, personality over topics and, you know, quality over, you know, quantity. But the one thing I learned is because when I was trying to learn the weld, I used to watch this guy, uh, Chucky2009. And I learned a lot of stuff about welding. But lately, he's been doing all this stuff about tractors and, you know, fixing tractors and mowing big farms and all that. And I'm a city boy. The closest farm to me is like 30, 40 miles away. So, uh, you know, I have no interest in watching anything about farm equipment. But over the years, I've watched Chucky 2000 learning to weld. So I, I'm invested in his personality so i still watch every video because i like the way he does things and talks so youtube is all about personality now the topic is what gets people there but your personality has to be what keeps them so yeah it's a it's a big misconception that topic and all that is the key now like i said it gets you there but you have to be the person that keeps them there. And I was watching uh, a few other people. And, like, um, there's there's this one girl, like, Sarah Dietschy or whatever. She's, like, a friend with Casey Neistat. Or and she's talking about when you're doing videos, you have to do one for yourself and one for everyone else. Which means, you know, like, this beginner knife-making series I'm doing. I know about all this, so it's not really for me, but a lot of you guys wanted it, so I'm doing this whole series for you guys, and a lot of people have gotten really good responses for it, and I do enjoy it, but, you know, I enjoy the heat treating stuff and the more difficult grinds and all that, so you have to kind of do both, you know, kind of do videos that make you happy and that make everyone else happy. I mean, as long as you love the whole process of YouTube, it shouldn't really matter, but it's easy to get caught up in the numbers and, oh, man, people like this, so I have to do everything like this. You know, oh, man, this is blowing through the roof, so I have to keep doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this. Man, and you lose track of what you want to do for yourself. So it's a whole give and take. Oh, one's coming along real good. That's what um, I was just saying when I started this. Let's see which ones are. Tomorrow, 
I'm going to do the knife, the beginner knife maker knife. I'm going to do this one in the oven. And I made two other knives. Uh, this one's 52100 and this is 80 CRV. So that video I'm going to start tomorrow. It should be up Wednesday. And that's going to be done in the oven. But I was just looking at the weather. And um, it says it's going to be 58 degrees on Tuesday. So I might go out and do the 1084 and the 01. Oh, I don't like showing that side. I need to fix that. <laughs> yeah, I got, don't grind when you're tired, man. That's, that's the big mistake number one. Do not grind when you're tired. When you start messing up a little bit, ah, it's fixable. I, I will fix it, but that's, that's why I keep trying to show it this way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the 1084 and the 01 with the, you know, where I use the torch and all that. You know, and I'll talk about this then. The torch is good for starting. You know, 20 bucks for the torch. You know, if you have a barbecue grill, you have a propane thing and all that. And, um, yeah, so it's cheap, but that torch burns a lot of gas and all that. And it's not very efficient. So while you're using and learning with the torch, the torch is awesome for how to learn how to heat treat, learning the basics and getting it down. Build yourself a forge or an oven. You know, that's the next, that's another thing. See, that's one of the videos for me, building the heat treat oven, my second heat treat oven. That's what I'm talking about, the the videos for someone else and one for me. The next, I'm going to start doing my heat treat oven, you know, so those are going to be my videos. <laughs> but you guys will get a lot of information if you want to build a heat treat oven. I mean, put it this way. A heat treat oven that you buy is like 1200 bucks, the cheapest. I got all the bricks and all that. I had to wait till the, the beginning of the month. That's why I've been kind of taking a break on it, so I can, you know, buy the rest of the stuff. But it was like 350 bucks for everything, bricks and all that. The bricks are the most expensive part, and I'll have a list of all the stuff you need to buy. Tempering, cy tempering cycles for all these steels, 01, 52100, and 80 CRV are about the same thing. Uh, it's like right around four, right around 400 for, um, actually I have to look up 01. I haven't done 01 in a long time, but I think it's right around 400 for like a 5960 temper. So, yeah, but they're all basically the same. So eight, 1084, all that 1095 W2, they're all the only ones where you get like, uh, that CPM 3V. That's like a thousand degrees tempering, so. Oh, that's awesome. Bootleg uh, blade. See? Bam. Talk about uh, irony. That's just what I started out talking about. You know, make a YouTube video. I'm telling you. Even if, even if no one subscribes, make a video and watch yourself grinding or watch yourself doing it. And you'll see your mistakes. I came up with, <coughs> excuse me, I was thinking about this when I was writing down the topics. That's why people make homemade porn. They want to see how they can improve. <laughs> I've been holding on to that joke all week. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that's why there's so much homemade porn. People always want to see how they can improve their, <laughs> oh, man. But it's true, you know, even if you don't put it out and want subscribers and all that, do it. And, and, you know, the thing is, these video files are large. So when you dump them off of your phone onto YouTube, that clears up space for another video or whatever. Because I'll tell you right now, I've got, let's see, I just bought a six terabyte drive because my four terabyte drive is almost full. And that's only like three months worth of uh, data. Now that I'm using a four camera setup, four or five camera setup, yeah, each each camera file is like uh, five gigabytes. So yeah, I just bought a new six terabyte. So that's a, just record something on your phone, put it up to YouTube, get it off your phone. That way you're not clogging up your phone. And that goes for any any hobby you want to start. 
You know, not only just to see your progress, you know, you'll look back on a month and be like, wow, I remember I was, I'm repeating myself, but it's true. You know, some of you just came in. Uh oh, Chip, you're late. You got to go to the back of the class. <laughs> What's up, Chip? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's it's it's that's why I started YouTube. You know, it wasn't to get all this stuff and well, honestly, the main reason I started was when I first started, I was like, man, and I looked for these videos like how to do a recurve, how to do a compound grind, how, you know, and there were no videos on that. And I was like, man, when I get good enough, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these videos and, and the heat cheating videos and all that. And, and then I'd be on these forums and, you know, I was talking to Chip about this about the two horsepower motor. I bought into it. I bought into the hype. You have to have a two horsepower motor. This one horsepower motor with the VFD, I can't tell the difference, to be honest. And I'm shocked. Ever since I started, you have to have at least 1.5 or 2 horsepower. I can't even notice it. It doesn't bog down at all or nothing. So I bought into the hype. I have joined all these forums and I listened. So I started doing these, you know, people, oh, you have to use Parks 50. You can't, you know, you can't do this without parts. So I put it to the test. And yes, if you're doing W2 and you want to do a hormone, you have to use parts 50. Now, if you don't want that hormone, McMaster car works perfect. And that's why I want to do this whole O1 experiment to see if using the torch is the same as cooking it in the oven. And that's why I started doing YouTube and all that. And, and to help other people and, and answer these questions. So there's a... You might start YouTube or whatever making videos for one reason, but as you get better at doing it and better at knife making, you'll be like, wow, you know, I can really help other people. You know, that you might not have that in you, but I learned off of YouTube, so I wanted to help people just as much as they help me. But, you know, I, I got to say YouTube is the, the weirdest dichotomy of them all. Who do I like watching? Um, well, Ecom Nas hasn't done anything. Simple Little Lives. I talk to Jeremy every once in a while. Walter Soros, he's like top notch. Um, but he started getting into the CNC things. He still does, you know, he still does. His older videos are good because it's all teaching. But, um, yeah, uh, Kayla Cummings, I, you know, she just started doing videos again. Um... There's a lot of people, you know, Blackbeard Projects, you know, that's the thing. Just because I can make knives doesn't mean I can't still learn. And I've talked about this a long time ago. When I was a carpenter, you know, I was a foreman. And I would tell people what they had to do. And there was a new kid that came in and he didn't know anything. And all of a sudden he's working. He's like, well, why can't we do it like this? And I was like. I don't know. Why can't we do it like that? And I started doing it like that. So this kid that didn't know anything about carpentry showed me something after 10 years of me working. So you never know who you're going to learn from. You know, I'll still go back and watch, you know, early knife making stuff just to learn because or just to revamp on what I forgot. So that's one thing about, you know, it doesn't matter what hobby or project you're doing. You gotta keep yourself active. Yeah, Walter's all, dude. Walter's sword making is phenomenal. But I think he's starting to get into like a more production oriented, more C and C stuff. So you know, but yeah, his videos. You know, see. I'm doing Knife Maker for the beginning with a grinder. He's done the videos where he does it all with a hacksaw and files. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't do it, man. I, I, I talked about that last week. I, I, I learned on a grinder, and, you know, going back is just hard for me. Even when I was doing these, these sharpening notches, I was thinking, man, I could pull out a round file and do that. And I was like, nah. I'm going to put them on my mill and do it. I'm not going to sit there with a file for two hours and, 
you know, or whatever. You know, that's why I, you know, I did that video with the trim router. Even that's a lot faster than the file. But there's people that love to do that stuff. <laughs> hey, if you want to do it, uh, man, I've, t I've said that before. There's a lot of people that are awesome with a 1x30. You know, I've done plenty of collabs. If you, you know, hit me up. My email's, you know, in my description. I'll do it. You know, send me the footage. We can, no problem. But I would like to see some of that. You know, I've told you guys, if you want me to look at your blades and stuff, you can email me. But, you know, like I said in the beginning of this, I find it hard to, to critique and, and tell people where they're wrong because I don't know how you guys are going to react. And it, it's... You know, I don't want to discourage someone. Ah, that house phone, I don't I don't even answer the house, that phone anymore. It's all telemarkers. I'm surprised it rang. That's the first time I think it's rang on the live stream. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, you forgot. I thought you said you got your uh, Harbor Freight. Now, the thing, I've been... Uh, See, talking to a few guys that got the new Harbor Freight because they changed it. Make sure if you get the bandsaw from Harbor Freight to get the two-year warranty. Because I've heard a few guys that the first one they got was messed up a little bit. And they took it back and they got, you know, they, they had to get like two or three till they got the good one. And once you get the good one, like I've had this bandsaw for three years. You know, no problems. And the day it, goes, the day it breaks, I'm going to Harbor Freight and buy another one. You know, that, you know, that's the thing. If you look up Google, like, coupons, you, you can get 20% coupons, all that stuff to make it a lot cheaper. So make sure to look at it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I want to see some pictures of that uh, forge when you make it there. That would be awesome. Ah. <laughs> uh. Phew. So, you know, one thing I think about knife making and anything is a philosophy I live by is when I buy this knife. You know, when I make a knife, I always look at it like, okay, would I buy this? If I, if so, if, if, you know, if I could step out of myself and I saw this knife, would I buy this knife? And that should tell you if you're getting better or not. You know, if you don't have someone to tell you, hey man, that looks bad or this needs to be fixed or whatever, look at it yourself and say, you know, would I buy this? And, and try to be honest with yourself. I didn't even sell a knife for two years. And I'm honest, I, I'm serious. It took me two years to even try to sell a knife. And, you know, my market, that's why I started watching Gary Vee and all that. My marketing and sales are horrible. I, you know, I just, I'm not good at selling things. So I make them and I put them up on the website and when they sell, they sell. But, yeah, it took me two years fighting bevels. And, man, that's, you know, that's how I learned this whole thing about, you know, keeping the, keeping the plunge line that far away. The one thing I noticed, I was talking to Chip about this too. Um, all knife, all the teachers that teach you stuff on YouTube, they teach you to come right up to the edge, right up to your plunge line. Now, I did it too, and that's how I started. I'd bring it right up, but then when you're grinding, when you go too far or something, you've messed up. After you heat treat it in your blade, it's harder. So it's, it's a little bit harder to mess up. I mean, you'll still mess up and overpress or whatever, but when it's harder, you know, and that's when you come back. You know, I'll show you that all, but keeping that, what, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. I realized after messing up so many smiley faces and messing up so many plunge lines and all that, it's like I started doing the swooping plungers, and it's like you have to start here anyway, and it's like, well, why don't I do that with all knives? Why am I starting where I have to finish? 
when you, you know when you start here you don't have any room for error so start over here and then that gives you all this room to mess up and fix and mess up and that's the thing about grinding there's a sweet spot like when you first start you're kind of getting that's why in that last video if you watched it I'm like just pull it a few times that gets you that gets your hand in the belt used to what you're doing just pull a few times straight that gets your hand kind of going gets you warmed up and then there's the spot <laughs> then there's the spot where you do this and you've been working too hard so there's that nice middle ground and that's what this gives you so you can grind out here you know bring your stuff down and then when you're in that fuck when oh, I almost cost <laughs> I'm trying not to when you're in that sweet spot then you can just bring it back and bring it up and 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 do it so that's why I taught you guys to leave that it, I've never seen another guy on YouTube say that and I, I guess a lot of guys just think oh well we just have to go right here and it once once it dawned on me about that it just made so much sense no I in fact, uh, Stocky Wolf, I'm getting ready to make a jig. It's been on my to-do list for about eight months because I've never even tried a jig. I've never, I've got the steel, all that right there. I've got a, a quarter-inch tap so I could tap the holes in here and hold it on. I've got the whole idea in my head, but I just haven't gotten to it. Because <clears throat> I think jigs are good, but I think... You have to learn how to freehand before you learn how to jig, do a jig. Because a jig has its purpose. And the jig's purpose isn't to make knife making easier. You know, that's the whole misconception. Oh, I want a jig so I can learn how to make knives fast and easy. Well, that's the wrong outlook. A jig is once you've learned how to freehand and once you learn how to control the knife, you go to a jig to up your produ uh, productivity. I must have said that word wrong. You know, a jig makes it so every time you pull it through, you're very consistent. But say you make it, say you're using this jig and all of a sudden you make a mistake and you don't know how to uh, freehand. What are you going to do? You know, that's why you need to freehand and then move to a jig. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you're cheating if you're using a jig. Oh, you're cheating if you, you know, that's all BS. The way you can make a knife the best is what you need to do but I highly suggest freehand that way you know how to fix facets you know say you're on a jig and you're pulling it through and you miss a spot or you go too deep on a spot well you can't sit there and hold the jig like this or you know it's just going to make it harder so you have to pull the knife off the jig and fix it so that's why you need the freehand but you know say Say you send out uh, 20 blanks to get heat treated or water jet or whatever. And you got, like, if you watch Ecom Knives old videos, he's got a rack of knives behind him where he just got them all cut out, heat treated, and then he just takes them off. A lot of people don't grind bevels before heat treat because uh, if you heat treat and then do bevels, you have a lot less chance to warp. So, uh... Yeah, he has all these blanks up there, and he just takes them off and does them. But to make his uh, productivity higher, he got a jig. So he can just bam, 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 bam. Instead of sitting there trying to freehand it and get it perfect, you can just pull it through, pull it through, pull it through, take it off, and then finish it. So jigs are awesome for that. But to learn on a jig, you know, it's, it's very, you know, it's kind of like the whole thing I was talking about going right to a grinder. You're, you're stumping your growth because you're not learning how to do it right. Like, I should have learned on files, but I went right to a grinder. So now when I have to learn on a file or something, like, I, I, I was talking to another guy, and he was like, man, do you know how to uh, make Damascus? I've never forged anything in my life. You know, I've swung a sledgehammer, a sledgehammer, a sledgehammer. <laughs> you know, in carpentry, I could swing a hammer. You know, in fact... I was talking to Steve Miller. I told him, this hammer is probably older than he is. This is a 32-ounce East Wing. You know, this is what I used to swing at work. So, um, I can swing a hammer, 
but I've never actually tried to forge. So I'd love, you know, you know, when I don't have to take care of my mom anymore, God forbid, I'll probably go out and try to do forging and make contact with other people. But right now, I can't go anywhere. Yeah, Nick Wheeler's. Yeah, I, I see a lot of these guys that I started watching don't do videos anymore. Nick Wheeler was an awesome guy for learning. I learned a lot of stuff watching his videos. So, yeah, it's, you know, each thing has its place. You know, you use a jig to make yourself more productive after you've learned how to make a knife. You know, and there's steps in it. I skipped a few steps, and I pay the price here and there. So, yeah, it's all in how you make it. So, yeah. But... Man, whoo, it's already 345. That was a good live stream. <laughs> Let me see if I missed anything. Oh, see, yeah, that, that did used to have a waffle head. But anytime we take a grinder and grind the waffle heads off, you don't want, you know, when you're building houses, you don't want big old wall, you know, when you're doing remodeling, all, well, you don't really use that hammer for, <laughs> uh, doing trim and all that, but when you, you know, you want something, when you, well, you're a carpenter, uh, Chip, what am I talking about? I'll tell, tell you how to be a carpenter when you do woodworking. <laughs> Just like, um, we didn't use coping sauce to do our trim, we used an angle grinder. We take it out and angle grind, <laughs> you know, cut the 45s and then angle grind it down to Make it cope instead of sitting there with a coping saw. <laughs> but these are tricks of the trade you learn. And that goes for anything. You know, you start off and you start making and you make it. And when you skip steps, there's a lot of things you miss out on. And then you got to go back. You know, when I, you know, after my guitarist died and all that back in 96, if any of you guys know about my music stuff, I quit music for 15 years. You know, there's pictures of me playing my dad's bass when I was three years old, and his jacket was twice as big as me. You know, I played piano when I was five, all that. And it, you know, drums, everything. But when he, when my guitarist died, I quit everything for 15 years. Everything. I didn't, you know, I built houses and all that, but I didn't do anything creative, musically. And then when I had to relearn it, it was twice as hard. And that's kind of how, it, when you skip steps, going back and trying to relearn is a lot harder than learning it the first time. All right, so I think that's about it. I think this went well. Thank you guys for uh, all the support. Man, we had a lot of people showing up. It's awesome. Man, it's kind of growing. The first, let's, let's have a good year. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do, though, start kind of talking about the YouTube thing a little bit, too, because I've been studying it a lot and the knife making, so we can kind of mix it all together. But like I said in the beginning, if you guys are making knives or any hobby, video yourself and put it on YouTube. All right. I'm rambling and repeating myself. I hope you guys are, you know, so far, what is it, day six of the new year? I hope it's been good so far. For me, I've, I'm getting off to a great start. You know, the end of last year kind of was bad, but it was good because it made me realize I was doing the wrong things and I had to step back and reanalyze everything. But I think we're off to a good start. So thanks for watching, everybody. The Amazon links are down below. Shirts like this are down below and up here. I need to start telling people, wait, it's up, up here. <laughs> I'm going to start putting my website up there and all that. <clears throat> and like the other, I'm going to put the live stream playlist up there. So all that's there. If you don't know what the Amazon links are, I probably talked about it too much in the last video. I'll put that up here too. So thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate all the support. Let's have a good week. And I'm going to get on heat treating tomorrow. So as always... Take it easy. Ha <laughs> ha.